Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you to this uh, channel. In this video, I am going to share my learnings on Buddha's teaching on non-self. See, uh, what my understanding is and from what I have learned of the study of the sutras, whatever little I could learn is that Buddha, this is one of the core teachings of the Buddha. Buddha said that this existence, this creation uh, that we see, uh, basically it is composed of three things. Basically, it like there are three qualities of this creation. One is impermanence, everything is changing. Second is non-self, that nothing has a permanent self. And third is that everything has suffering within it. Right? So, non-self is one of the one of, one of the key teachings of your of the Buddha. Right? So the in plain terms, if uh, you know I were to interpret what Buddha was trying to say is that everything is impermanent, everything is changing, so nothing has a permanent self. So generally what we have this idea of, you know, I, you know, that I have a permanent self. And with that idea that I have, uh, I have craving, right? Craving for things, for objects, the desire that happens. And remember Buddha's, you know, noble truth number two, the cause of the suffering is the desire. So if we take out the root, we take out this I idea, the idea of I, that I am something separate. I am something permanent, right? That then the desire will also not be there. The desire will only exist till I think that I am permanent. The uh, object to which I am attached to, maybe it, it is a person, it's an object, it's a you know money, possessions, whatever. That is also I think permanent. But if I when I realize that there is nothing permanent in this creation, everything is just a play of the aggregates, form, feelings, you know, volition, consciousness. Right? Perce form, feelings, perception, volitions, consciousness. It's a play of, of things as per some higher law. You can call it law of karma or something. So, when I know that I am myself not, uh, you, know, you know, on a firm ground, then how can I have a desire for something? How can I have a craving, craving for something? Then it, that will be a foolish thing. It is then that the ignorance that I have, that disappears. And then knowledge dawns on me, the wisdom comes and then I become free, I become liberated, I achieve nirvana, which is the goal of Buddha's teaching. So I have a, a, a few, uh, uh, you know, uh, sutras that, you know, I will just want to read the excerpts, what Buddha actually said uh, uh, with respect to non-self. The first and the most important sutra that I could find was the link discourse is 22.59. So this is basically said to be the second discourse given by the Buddha. The first discourse was uh, that Buddha gave was to the five disciples in Sarnath, the first sermon, Dhamma Chakra Pavatana Sutra. This is said to be the second discourse, which is the discourse on non-self. This is a very, very important, just two-page discourse, right? The link to this discourse and all the other discourses that I am going to talk about in this video are given in the description. You can go and check the individual discourses so that you can get your own insight on what Buddha said. So here Buddha said is that, Mendicants. So this is again, this discourse was also given in Varanasi, in the deer park at Isipatana. So in the first discourse, actually, it said that the Kodanna, the one, one of the disciples, he got perfected, liberated. And here Buddha gives, addresses a group of five mendicants. And it is said that after this discourse, all the five mendicants got liberated. Right? So how, this is how powerful this discourse is. So Buddha says, Mendicants. Form is not self. Form, this body, is not self. For if form were self, it wouldn't lead to affection. affliction. That means Buddha is trying to reason with us that if your form, your body is you, it will not give you suffering. Now, this how real is this? That my body gives me pain, my body gives me all kinds of aches and pains. If it would have been me, it would not, have, it would not be giving me suffering. Similarly, and Buddha says, and you could compel your form. May my form be like this. May it not be like this. Because form, and we cannot compel, we know that we cannot compel our form, our body to act in certain ways. Right? It does follow the instructions of the mind, but sometimes it doesn't also follow. But because form is not self, Buddha says, it leads to affliction. And you can't compel form. May my form be, we cannot like say, may I be beautiful. Right? May I be attractive? May I be handsome? No. Body will not follow what we say. So Buddha says, and you cannot compel form. May my form be like this. May it not be like that. 
Similarly, Buddha is saying about all the five aggregates. So what are the five aggregates? Form, feeling, perception, volition and consciousness. Similarly, Buddha is saying feeling is not self, perception is not self, choices are not self, consciousness is not self. That means even feeling, can you control your feeling, how it arises, right? Pleasant feelings come, unpleasant feelings come, they just come and go. Can you control your perceptions, how you perceive things, they just come and go. We, ca we cannot control them. Same with choices, our intentions. No, they, we think that we have choices, we have volition, but deep down there are many subconscious you know patterns which are driving our choices so that is also not consciousness when you see an object outside the eye consciousness rises when you see a sound the sound consciousness the ear consciousness rises when you smell anything the the the, the smell the nose consciousness rises so again that is also dependent so everything in this creation is dependent upon something else everything arises because something else arises, right? So I hope, see, I am trying to make it as simple as possible, right? As per whatever little understanding I have, the important thing to understand is, and there is another discourse Buddha gave on dependent origination. That means everything arises because of something else. There is no God or a creator who is like, you know, creating the beings, right? Buddha totally rejected this idea of a God or a creator being who creates everyone, right? He said, Basically, things get created from various factors and they arise and fall. They arise and fall. The very fact that we think that, you know, everything is very stable and permanent, this gives the desires in us. Once that goes, this non-self, the knowledge of non-self arises in us, then we know it's just a play happening and we just witness this play, this play that happens. Right? Okay. So, Buddha further says in this discourse, what do you think mendicants is the form permanent or impermanent? Then Buddha talks about permanence. So this is impermanence and non-self are very related. So, so when the, the mendicant said impermanent sir. But then Buddha says if it is impermanent, is it suffering or happiness? If something is impermanent, is it suffering or happiness? You answer me. So they said suffering. If anything is permanent, only that can give you happiness. If anything is impermanent, it will only give suffering. The problem is, what Buddha tries to stress in all his teachings was that we take things which are not permanent as permanent, base our happiness on that, and then when the things disintegrate, then we get suffering. And cycle after cycle in our life, we have been doing like this. Hundreds of births we have taken, and we have been compelled, you know, birth also, we, it's not a choice. We have been compelled to take a birth by our karmic structure. So we have been compelled to take birth after birth after birth and we go into this cycle unless in one life you get a teacher like Buddha who says that all this is impermanent. Do not cling to anything. Do not desire anything. Because everything is changing. And this is the root of suffering. So if you want to be free from suffering, Leave all the desires of anything that is impermanent and non-self. Right? So Buddha says, if it's impermanent, is it suffering or happiness? The mendicant said, suffering. Then Buddha said, but if it's impermanent, suffering and perishable, is it fit to be regarded as this is mine, I am this, this is myself? Right? Buddha's question was, if it is impermanent, it is suffering and it is perishable. That means it will arise and fall. Still you will attach yourself that this is mine, this body is mine, or this person, you know, who I am wedded with, or, you know, married with, is mine, or this money is mine, these possessions are mine. No, because you know, that is perishable, you are perishable, everything is perishable. So, mendicant said, no, sir, we will not think like that. So, similar way, Buddha said, is feeling permanent, is perception permanent, is choices permanent, is consciousness permanent. So, they sim simply said, no, no, sir, it is it is impermanent, it is suffering and we should not regard it as mine. So then Buddha said, so you should truly see any kind of form at all, past, future or present, internal or external, coarse or fine, inferior or superior, far or near, all form with the right understanding. This is not mine, I am not this, this is not myself. So this is basically what Buddha wanted us to 
have we have to have you know when we see any form you know we should not get attached to it we should just know that this is not me this is changing everything is changing we should always reflect on that that way we will not get attached to anything not only form but feelings perceptions our intentions volitions it's just arise consciousness it's just arising and falling buddha said further seeing this a learned noble disciple rose disillusioned with form feeling perceptions choices and consciousness being disillusioned desire fades away when desires fade away the person is freed right so it is our illusion to know that these things are they have a perf- have a finite self that restricts us when we this is our practice friends this is our practice with mindful first of all what we have to do is that we have to be mindful during the day as we talk walk speak with people see if you know these things are arising in us you know that i am permanent everything is changing you think of yourself a picture of yourself 20 years ago and your picture now you've got you know your face has changed everything your body has changed right so we have that thing that mindfulness we need to have and once that happens buddha says we become disillusioned with these things this this is our practice and they understand buddha says the birth is ended the spiritual journey has been completed what had to be done has been done there is no return to any state of existence that means if this knowledge is established in us then the wisdom arises right and then we become free we do not need to come back to this planet or any other existence we do not need to return because because our journey has got ended right so and and they said and while this discourse was being spoken the minds of the group of five mendicants was freed from defilements and they got liberated so this is one discourse that i came across let me come across one uh, two or three other discourses were very small discourses which i just could so uh, in another discourse that uh, nakula's father buddha said that uh, nakula's father asked buddha is how is a person ailing in body and ailing in mind buddha again said this thing people who think that they have a independent self they have a permanent self they are obsessed with the thought i am form form is me but this form of their decays and perishes which gives rise to sorrow lamentation pain sadness so important thing to understand is if we want to get rid of suffering we want to get rid of this i idea that i am something this idea we has to go we have to become nothing right okay then buddha in one of the discourses buddha said those who don't understand non self are like a dog attached to a pillar so buddha said suppose a dog on a leash was tethered to a strong post or pillar it would just keep running and circling around that post in the same way take an unlearned ordinary person who has not seen the noble ones neither skilled nor trained they have not seen the true persons they regard form feeling perceptions choices consciousness as self they just keep running and circling around form feeling perceptions choices and consciousness doing so they are not freed of form feeling perceptions choices they are not freed from rebirth old age death from sorrow lamentation pain sadness distress they are not freed from suffering then there was this discourse that i came across where buddha said understanding the teaching of non self is the key to understanding buddha's teachings so buddha said mendicants any person it is quite impossible for a mendicant who regards any condition as self to to accept views that agree with the teaching that means a person who thinks that everything is self for him it will be very difficult to accept buddha's teachings other teachings but a person who understands the concept the idea of non self for him it will be very easy to accept the teachings of the buddha the, all the other teachings right because buddha's all teaching dependent origination impermanence all these are very very closely interwoven interconnected so if you understand this you will be able to understand that because this is one of one of the fundamental teachings if you don't understand this then it is difficult to understand buddha's other teachings then buddha says in one discourse is give up the desire for what is not not self give up the desire means see the only thing is that buddha says everything in this creation 
what is in this creation form feeling perceptions volitions consciousness all things then five, all five aggregates are changing then buddha is say, say, saying basically give up the desire for anything in this creation that means engage in whatever you do but give up desire of anything no desire from any person from any situation from your job from your business no desire should be there because everything is changing there is no self then buddha says mendicants when the perception of non self in suffering is developed and cultivated that's very fruitful so buddha even says that even suffering when you have suffering we think that i am suffering i have this problem i am suffering buddha says even there you need to just remove that perception of i just know that this suffering is arising and falling right so there also if we remove this notion of per per permanence of you know this permanent i that is suffering that also is very very fruitful and beneficial right so these are some of the uh, uh, teachings of the buddha that i could uh, compile on uh, on the uh, non self now to practically apply these teachings the way i would suggest is being mindful in our daily life and practice insight meditation insight meditation in the tradition of uh, masi sadao is based on satipatthana sutra right so here in that tradition also that that insight meditation we do not regard as like i am walking i just regard my walking as the very movements that happen the intentions to move and the movements the actual movements that happen so when i practice like that slowly 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 that insight comes of this impermanence right so i practice that i have made a separate video of on insight meditation you can check that you can if you don't practice insight meditation uh, you may get inspired to practice insight meditation by that video so this is it uh, i hope this was useful uh, if i have missed any important discourse or any important teaching of the buddha do please um, highlight in the comment section uh, and i will definitely try to incorporate in my later videos if you have any reflections any thoughts on this teaching do please share in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya